everybody, welcome to part 5 of our Let's Play The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap 100% full game playthrough on totally original hardware, wink wink. Um, last episode we sought out the next element, the fire element, which led us up to uh, Mount Krennel and into our second dungeon, the Cave of Flames. Uh, early in the episode, we also tried to help the, uh, the the crazy lady get her birds back. You know, cuckoo lady, crazy lady, you know, a little, little funny there. Um, we got through, I think, what, four rounds, and I think there's like nine rounds until you get the heart piece. Um, I said that I would, you know, check out how other people did it and maybe get that at the end of this episode. I am retconning myself on that one. We're not going to worry about the cuckoo game right now because... Whilst I did royally screw up the uh, mechanics, like, you know, I'm walking the birds back one by one when you're actually supposed to be throwing them towards the coop and hope that they run over there to make it easy. Uh, we're also going to get a pair of uh, magic boots or the Pegasus boots or dash boots or whatever they're called in this game later on that will, you know, let us cover distances a little quicker. So we'll come back to the rest of the cuckoo game later. Now, what we are definitely going to do in this episode is take on our second dungeon, the Cave of Flames, and get our second element for the sword that, uh... What's her... What's his name? Uh, Malari? Right? Malari? Yeah, Malari. Malari is currently working on our ancient pickery blade, or minish blade, or whatever you want to call it. So, um... We were... It was suggested that we go and get the second element while he's working on the sword, so... Yeah. Anyway. This isn't the time to idle about, you lazy boy. We have to go search for the elements while Malari works on that sword. Bro, I just turned the game on. Chill. Alright, here we go. Dungeon 2, Cave of Flames. And we're just gonna follow the, uh, the guide here and keep this nice and simple. It looks like it wants us to go this way first. Oh, the bombs Cool. Oh, crap. Look at that. If we hit them with a boomerang, they blow themselves up. I think it's pretty obvious that we're supposed to bomb the wall up here. Since literally everything we've touched in the room has given us more bombs. You know, I have to say, not not to take away from the 3D Zelda games, because I, I enjoy pretty much all the Zelda games that I've played so far, but there's something about that classic nostalgic feel of these uh, top-down games. Oh. Oh! Your sword won't make a dent in their thorny armor. Flip them over before you strike. Um, we don't have anything that can do that yet, do we? I could probably shield bash them, actually. Ah, oh, yeah, there we go. Alright, we've got the compass already. Guess for now we'll... yeah. Aw, oh, come on! Alright, well, didn't get our shield, just a couple rupees. One of these has to move. Really? All right. Ha <laughs> ha! 
This must be what the humans who built this mine used to get around in here. Maybe we should hop in. Hmm, what? After all this, you don't expect me to believe you're scared. There's nothing to be afraid of here. Come on, let's go. Yeah, nothing to be afraid of in the monster-filled mine. Mm -hmm. All right, let's take care of these guys. That's awesome. Sweet jumping jellyfish, that was awful. Hey kid, what are you smiling about? I knew it was madness to risk our lives in that rickety human contraption. From now on, let's just stick to our feet. Well, I mean your feet. Oh, Big Bad Hat said, go ahead and do it, and then turn into a chicken shit. Alright, so it looks like we want to go... Obviously, we have these minish pathways that we can't access in our regular size. Crap. And that looks pretty obvious. I like in this game that the bombable walls are, like, impossible not to tell apart from the regular walls. I mean, obviously some of them are still secret, but, you know, whatever. Alright, let's bust out the gust jar. Ooh. Triple kill. Oh, there's another one. Alright. How interesting. So there was a portal hidden away in here, hmm? Wherever you, whenever you want me to shrink you down, just hop up here and press R. Now I think... Should be a heart piece we can grab in here right now that we have this portal opened up. Let's go back to where we, uh... We're not getting that hard piece yet. All right. Oh, crap. All right, we got to be very careful here. Sure, if we stay far enough away, they won't even notice us. <laughs> All right, so obviously, we're going to go down here and Oh, okay. I guess we're not going to go down from the stairs. Oh, uh, all right. So we're going to drop down here and carefully navigate our way around the big old fire. We have a dungeon map, that's always pretty good to have. Keep it on this screen now so we know what we're looking for. Means we have to change gear again. Oh! Wow! Alright, blue kinstone piece. Oh my! It looks really, really hot in that lava. <laughs> no shit! Trust me, falling into that would be a bad idea. I'm sure you agree. 
Um, yes, I would like to not fall into the fire. No, not, not falling into the fire seems like a pretty good idea. Um, yeah, I'm gonna pull some of those off with the gust jar first. So I can already see not being able to lift that up in time and the platform dropping out. these. Oh, crap. Alright, 50 rupees. Rupees are always... Ow! Let's do this. Let's get rid of these. do we get the key? Bombs are cool, but, you know, one recovery heart would be uh, pretty cool, too. Alright, I think we're gonna go back this way now. And then we're gonna go... through here. We're we changing the track direction yet? Let's see. Flip the lever and get back in the cart. All right. All right, now it's time to go get that heart piece. see all right yes yeah, so we're supposed to go this way and here's our classic Zelda spike trap and then it says to get the heart piece we're gonna walk right along the track here obviously being careful not to get knocked in Ooh, 
There we go. Alright, let me see the very obvious bombable wall there. You got a piece of art. Excellent. We completed a new container. Life energy has been replenished and increased. Awesome. Six hearts already. All right, now... Oh, are we gonna go this way? Okay, I guess we're just gonna go this way. Let's do this. I, I think this actually does count as the, um, the dungeon's mini-boss. As far as I'm concerned, whatever it requires us to kill to get the dungeon item is going to be considered a mini-boss. The Cane of Pachi, or Pasi, I'm going to say Pachi. This mystical rod has the power to flip things over. Use it to charge up energy in holes, then flip up on out of it. Alright, that's pretty cool. Alright, so, let's go over here. Excellent. Hey kid, why don't you take that cane Apache and fire it at that hole? I mean, you never know what'll happen until you try, right? There we go. Alright, blue portal activated. Back in this room again. Flip this over. Ah! Ah! Alright, same thing we did earlier. We're gonna push this right into that hole over there to open the chest. Alright, we got a small key. Now where the hell are we going next? That's where we're going next. All right. Want to see how we're doing on treasure chests in this dungeon. We've got everything up here. Basement 3 is just the boss. we got some chests to clear out in Basement 2. And now that we have that key, we can get into Basement 2. Let's see. Oh, well, there's a note right on the map that says don't touch this lever until after we get the mine card in here, so that's good to know. Alright, we gotta be very careful here. Okay. Oh. 
Apparently, when you're a menace, those don't trigger. Alright, let's ride this into the other room. Now it says we can flip this. Guess we just hop back in. Ah, oh, come on. All right, I screwed up. Dude, really? Come on! Probably hit you. Oh, oh that works. Alright, listen. Get in that spot right now. Asshole. Drag this out. Oh, well, they actually have Link's face turning red when he's dragging something like that. That's that's adorable. This game really is a hidden gem that just does not get the love and appreciation it deserves. All right, there we go. Now, probably well, we want to go up this way. I think would be the most obvious answer. How am I going to get that treasure chest? Hmm. Oh. Right. I have a cane that can create vortexes of air in these holes. Really should not have had to look at the book to realize that, but whatever. Alright, kinstone piece. Alright, so we've got uh, some decent... Got some blue kinstone pieces to work with. Which means maybe next episode might be some uh, time for an interlude, but let's see. Alright, so we want to go over this way now that we can. we got to be very careful going about this. Boss door is up there. Portal, that's always good. Yeah, give those a chance to respawn. Got to get down there. Oh, 
come on. Ooh. Um, let's do the same thing we did before. Let's uh, suck some of these jars out of the way first. For pots, I guess. Link, Link's thing is smashing pots. What if the boomerang can pick up the hard pieces? Yes, it can. Awesome. Oh, crap. Come on! We got a green kinstone piece. Ow. Where am I supposed to go here? Oh, shit. Okay. Somehow we gotta get up there. Oh, that's cool. right over here. Alright, we're going to have to be doing some fancy flying on this one. Some really fancy flying on this one. Alright. Here we go. We got a hundred rupees. Oh. Right, know what I forgot to do? That. Shit. Alright, so I guess the obvious answer is to go over here. Get rid of the fire. And we'll use this to get up here, that's better. Now obviously with the wind vortexes you want to um, line up your shadow with theirs. Another green kinstone piece. So we have uh, one chest left to get in this room, right? And that should be the boss key. So I believe that is. I, I believe we've got all the treasure chests in the dungeon. We 
want to land right over here yonder. I thought we weren't going to make that. That would have sucked. You got the big key. Use it to open big doors. All right. Let's drop right down here. All right. Boss fight time. As with every Zelda game, we're going to keep the item that we got in the dungeon equipped because it's usually a, a given that we're going to be using said dungeon item in the boss fight. Oh uh, yeah, I remember this guy. Alright. So we have done everything in the dungeon. We got all the treasure chests. We got the map, the big key, the compass. And the only room we have left to fill is the chamber below us for the boss fight. So here we go. That's a very Oracle of Series noise. Uh, Oracle of, yeah, Oracle Series noise. All right. Come here, you big slimy fire slug. So use the cane to uh, flip the shell on itself. Don't fall in the lava when it pulls back. Watch out for fallen rocks. You got a pretty fast turn radius there, don't you, fella? Should be almost dead already, actually. Oh. Oh, we got some kind of damage cap. And boom, second boss is defeated. You got the fire element. Flames bring light to darkness and warmth to all. The fire element is the embodiment of that power. And there it is. All right, two dungeons down. We're up to seven hearts already. And yeah. Oh, that was hot. It was so hot. I thought my fibers would catch fire. Ah, but it's over now. I suppose we should go back and speak to Malari. Yes. All right, so obviously we're not going to make the full journey to the next dungeon, but we're um, we're not quite done with this episode yet.
because there are a couple things we can do on our way back to Hyrule, and so we are going to do them. First things first, let's go find Malari and see if our sword's fixed. You know, obviously we need, we need the power of all four elements to make it what we need it to be, but you know... Ooh, that looks new and shiny. Wow, that was fast work, but not so fast that I didn't finish your sword. Here, take a look. I call this new blade the White Sword. You got the white sword. Its beautiful white blade sparkles with light. You can put away your grandfather's sword now. Once you infuse it with the power of the elements, it will become a sacred blade. The forest elder no doubt told you this part, but... If you want to infuse the sword, you must go to the elemental sanctuary. The sanctuary is a strange realm, trapped between two worlds. It is the bridge between the Minish world and the human world. The doorway to the sanctuary opens only once every hundred years. <laughs> How convenient. You'll find that door hidden within Hyrule Castle. Once the blade has been filled with the power of the four elements, you should be able to break the curse on your princess. I know you can do it. After all, you made short work of that human mind. Let me tell you about a shortcut you can use to get down from the mountain. You'll find it right in front of the entrance of the mine you just explored. Just follow that, and you'll be down in no time. Good luck. Yeah, alright, so we can take the shortcut down. And then, like I said, we gotta make a couple stops uh, on the way back to Hyrule. Basically, every time we finish a dungeon, we're gonna make, make it so we're back in Hyrule, and then we'll stop. So we have a new powered up sword. It's not complete yet because we still have to get the water and wind elements, but we'll get there. Actually, let's let's keep the cane of uh, Pachi equipped for now. Let's see what this thing can do. So now if we need to go back up there, we can if we do that. Alright, so the sword's definitely more powerful now. I bet the cane Apache would work on those stupid rock things. Let's see. Yep. Nice. That's awesome. Alright, let's get out of here. There's nothing on the upper part of the mountain we can do until we get um, another dungeon item. There's something on the way out of the, uh, the Krennel region that we should be able to get. to do. Okay, so yeah, it's in the Trilby Highlands, not the, uh... But we're gonna go back to where we bought the empty bottle from the, uh, the business scrub. Oh. Ah, uh, 
uh, yeah, we have to actually infuse the elements first. My bad. We can't do anything here yet. That'll be later. Whoopsie. Now, there was... Uh, Oh, it's not going to show it? Oh, there it is. So remember we did the green kinstone fusion last episode, and it showed us that it opened up, uh... Well, a treasure chest appeared over here in the Minish Woods. So before we, uh... Before we end this episode, we are going to go pick that up. Just because if I don't, I'm going to end up forgetting about it. Postman, get out of my way! All right, so let's go. Let's go grab that Kinstone Fusion reward that we activated, and then we will come back to town. We'll infuse the sword with the two elements, and that'll be a wrap for this episode. I'm oh, sorry, Crazy Bird Lady. So I'm going to wait till we get the dash boots. That way we can just, like, run all the way over here quickly to get the birds that are over here. That's, like, the biggest reason why we're just not even going to worry about the Cuckoo Lady now until later. Alright, let's go this way. I can't believe that didn't hit me. Oh, I love this classic theme. Don't get me wrong, I've, I've said it before, I, I love some of the modern games they have out now, but you just can't beat the classics. Bye bye. Where are we now? Alright, let's go over back into the Minish Woods and grab that treasure chest. Now, typically, the green kinstone rewards are usually, uh, just shells or rupees, I believe. They're not, like, set rewards like the, um, the blue and red kinstone pieces. Obviously, at some point, that'll open up. So when you see an area like that that's blocked off, there's usually something cool in there, and it usually requires a blue or red kinstone fusion to open up. Alright, over the bridge. Alright, there's the treasure chest. A red kinstone piece. All right, cool. You know what? I wonder. I wonder. May have access to something that now... All right. There's something I'm going to look into off-screen after we, if we're finished with this episode because this may actually be a great time to do some uh, interluding. Let's head back to Hyrule. Actually, you know what? I'm, yeah, no, we'll, we'll wait. Because I want to... I don't know. I don't remember if there's a cutscene attached to this side quest. Oh, come on. Beetle's not here yet. Alright. So we're going to head back to the castle and find our way into the elemental sanctuary that we have been told to seek out.
So there is definitely some stuff that we can do, just from me flipping through the pages of the guide. I'm just not sure if it's actually going to warrant doing its own episode or not. But whatever, I'll check everything out off screen and then decide. I mean, these episodes are really not coming out to be that long anyway, which was expected for this style of game, but... I probably don't really need to do separate episodes for collecting stuff. I could probably just squeeze it all in. Here we are, and uh... all right. So what we're gonna do to find this sanctuary is go into the castle. And I imagine if we go and talk to the... oh wait a minute, are you sure I look all right? I never know when to wear the f what to wear to formal occasions. Do you a talking hat? I think you're good. So I would imagine that if we went into the throne room, the king will probably tell us exactly where the elemental sanctuary is. Right. Oh, Link! You have returned! Welcome! Did you gather the elements? What? A sanctuary, you say? Why, I've heard of no such thing in my castle. Oh, that's helpful. Yeah. Hmm, a sanctuary? You know, I do recall a story my grandmother once told me long ago. She said she saw a doorway appear in the palace courtyard as a child. There we go. Minister, whatever his name is, knows what's up. If this door does indeed open only once a century, it may be open even now. As with the Bikori themselves, the door is visible only to the eyes of a child. We might have walked past it recently and never even known it was there. Alright, these guys can both do green kinstone fusions, I think, so let me, uh... Get my phone out so I can make a note of this, because I still didn't make myself a, uh... A checklist for the green ones yet. Let's see what Minister What's-His-Face here wants. You want to fuse kinstones? Sure, why not? Oh, look at that, I got one. Alright, Minister Palfo. The two kinstone pieces fit perfectly, maybe something good will happen. Oh, looks like we'll be going back to the Minish Woods. Alright, so Minister Palfo. They fit perfectly. I didn't expect that. Maybe something good will happen now. Alright, hold on. We did Minister Potho, and the chest is in the Minish Woods. Let's see if the king's a green one. You want to fuse kinstones in this dire time? Well, I can see no harm in it. King Daltus, and seeing as the icon above his head showed a rupee, I'm guessing our reward for him is going to be rupees. Alright, King Daltus. Really? South Hyrule Field. Okay. Sorry, like I said, making notes of what kinstone fusions I'm doing for the green since I didn't make my uh, my list yet for those ones. I was, like I said, I was going to skip them until I found out there actually is like a visible reward for uh, doing them. 
Alright, so we're not going to pick those up in this episode. We're going to end this episode by checking out the sanctuary and putting the, uh, the two elements we've already gathered into our sword. So let's head down here. And somewhere in this room is the doorway out to the courtyard. Minute, where the hell do those stairs go? Well, would you look at that strange glowing gold door. Link, look! See how that doorway glows? Could that be the door that leads to the sanctuary? Nobody in the castle seems able to see it but you and me. Let's go, quickly. Yeah, talking hat, how come you can see it? Alright, elemental sanctuary. So this is the Elemental Sanctuary, then. This is where we can infuse your blade with the power of the elements. Yes, there seems to be a pedestal for your sword right in the middle there. Alright, well, obviously we uh, can't leave here, so let's go ahead and do this. Oh. What's up here? Anything? of the earth and fire elements have infused your blade. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can't read that tablet for you. Fill your sword with power and walk over the glowing tile. Hmm, perhaps it refers to those flashing spots on the floor around you. Well, what are you waiting for? Try it, Link! just split in two. So this is the power of the white sword. I would call the two sword right now. I guess you can double yourself like that anytime you see those panels. And that is our ticket back out of this now sealed room. to the elemental sanctuary is in the castle courtyard. All we adults see is just another ordinary wall. Incredible. Please, just gather the remaining two elements and repair the sacred sword. I'm counting on you, Link. Never forget that. Oh, the doorway was indeed in the garden. My grandmother was right. Well, my family has always been known for its honesty above all else. But I still can't understand. Why is it that children can see the Picori and the doorway, but I cannot? Alright, so... We are actually going to go ahead and pop over into that side room where we were healing up after Vadi uh, caused mayhem and save right here.
All right, that's I think that's a good stopping point for this episode. So we got the second element already. We now have the ability to split to make a little transparent copy of ourselves. Um, yeah, we have two more elements to get, and then we can break Vadi's curse. So next episode, uh, like I said, I don't know if I'm going to do a separate episode just to go around doing Kinstone Fusion and stuff. I, I might. Or maybe I'll just go and do all the Kinstone Fusions that it says we can do now, and then still uh, go all the way to the next dungeon. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I'll decide. So, yeah, next episode, we're either just going to do some Kinstone Fusions and, and pick up some stuff, or we're going to do that and go to the next dungeon. I don't know. We'll, we'll decide then. In the meantime, thank you all for watching. Hope everyone's enjoying the game so far, and we'll see you back next time.